Good morning and welcome to worship with Trinity United Church for Sunday, July 5th. Blessed be the God who creates all out of nothing. Blessed be Jesus who gives all for nothing. Blessed be the Spirit for whom nothing is impossible. Blessed be God forever. Welcome to Trinity United Church. We worship from a distance in isolation. We are an affirming congregation, and through the love of God and in relationship with others, we seek to create a more just and harmonious world. All are truly welcome. We are not alone. This week, friends, we learned of the death of Bob Dick of our congregation. Bob was a charter member of Trinity United Church. And last month, we mourned the passing of Hazel Lamont, also among the charter members of Trinity United Church. Let us take this moment as we light our Christ light, to remember them, to remember their contributions and their work for the church. And let us also celebrate that they join that cloud of witnesses surrounding us at all times. The light of Christ shines in our midst. In the space between us and within us. Thanks be to God. We are a community of faith and we believe that the earth is God's. And we believe that all who dwell upon the earth are called on to care for the earth and to live as neighbors one with another. The land where we find ourselves and when we gather where we gather is the traditional territory and is the home for generations past and yet to come of those peoples of the First Nations which signed Treaty 6 and likewise is the traditional territory of the Métis Nation. Treaty 6 was signed in 1876 at Fort Carleton and at Fort Pitt, and it was between the Cree, Assiniboine, Ojibwe, and the Crown. We are all part of this treaty. May God help us to be good and respectful neighbors with each other. May God help us to live with respect in creation. In this moment of mystery, in this moment of hope, in this moment of life, loving God, open our hearts to wonder. I invite you at this time to listen for the word that the Spirit may bring for you, reading from Psalm 145. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. God, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all that you have made. Let the word dwell in you richly, that you may abide in hope and be transformed toward the healing of the world. Amen. Today we have two scripture readings to share. The first is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, reading in the seventh chapter, beginning at verse 15. 
reading from the New Revised Standard Version. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing that I hate. Now, if I do not, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For if I do not do the good that I want, but the evil I do not want, that is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched one that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The second reading is, from, is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, reading in chapter 11, reading verses 16 through 19, and then continuing at verse 25 through 30. These are Jesus' words. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, and they said, He has a demon. The Son of Man came, eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is part of our sacred story. Thanks be to God. I am somewhat unsure about where my words should be going this day. There are so many things that I could be talking about it when it comes to things that are happening locally, across the country, around the world. There are, for example, so many different responses to the ongoing pandemic of the COVID-19 virus. In some countries, the curve is flattening. In some, it is rising. 
In some communities, people are feeling defiant and want to open up businesses and services and recreation. In some communities, people are feeling very cautious, still avoiding going out very much and wearing a mask when they do. And in many communities, you have a smattering of both extremes. On another front, there are the ongoing protests and demonstrations related to the Black Lives Matter movement. More people are simply hearing the term systemic racism, and some people are genuinely interested to understand what it means. A number of cities and municipalities are starting to have conversations about policing a significant part of that movement and issues around community safety, wondering, asking questions if things can be done differently. And some people are choosing to be ignorant about even that conversation having decided not to look at the subject at all. And then there's the matter of the global economy. And I say global because all the world is affected by this pandemic. But what happens when the curves of this pandemic, pandemic finally do flatten, whenever that may be? Will there be businesses that simply will not be viable to open again? Will there be changes to industries that we simply cannot foresee at this time? And everyone worries about the enormous debts that our governments will be carrying. Debts that are needed, debts that are part of caring for our citizens in this time. But who, to whom will we be indebted? And are they in as much debt as we are as well? I wonder, is it possible? Is it simply possible that economies could become something different from before? And if that's the case, would that be good or bad? Or what? Through all of this, I also wonder, what is, the, what is happening to us? What are we becoming? There was a time when I wondered if we, the, the collective we, everyone, might just become a little more compassionate. Maybe that could still be the case. Wouldn't that be something? Remember the stories about neighbors lauding health workers at the ends of shifts, making noise, saying thank you, all of that. Remember people making chalk drawings on the sidewalk, trying to brighten everyone's spirit as you see them. And about even more recently, drive-by graduation parades as High schoolers graduate, but can't be together with one another. And indeed, there are people who are saying that they need to learn more about systemic racism, what it looks like, what it means, if it's not something that's part of your own lived experience. Maybe we can become more compassionate. But there are times when I wonder if we're also becoming more fearful. Anxious about our health? Do we become fearful of others that we meet? It feels so strange to me when I'm going for a walk and I meet somebody coming up to one and we take a wide berth around each other. I don't want 
to become fearful of my neighbors. I don't feel that I am, but it's an action that feels like fear. Still others are becoming defiant and resist recommendations and requirements. And I'm sure you've heard stories of people demanding that the businesses open and crowd the bars and masks be damned. You've heard the defiant cries in circles that say, we don't have a problem with racism. We're not racist. All of those things. I wonder what's that making of us. When I see how we are shaped by the events and the movements that are around us, well, there are times when I can be hopeful. There are times when I will be discouraged. I can feel like there is possibility and I can feel it's the same old, same old as before, only maybe a little worse. There are many entries on the list of things that I'm thinking about these days. And perhaps the words of Paul in the letter to the Romans are not high on that list. For that matter, the words of Jesus that we heard in the Gospel of Matthew might not be high on that list either. Maybe, though, preacher that I am, I'll come back and say that there might be something to be found in these words, the words from Paul and also the words from Jesus. Paul was talking about sin. I simply say that, and I know that often when we hear that word even, we think, well, that's just about breaking the rules. Kind of simplistic way of thinking about it. Our thinking around this, our theology is much more developed than that. But it sticks with us and it stays. You kind of like thinking, well, if you're obedient, if you follow the rules, then you're good. And if you don't, it's sin. But Paul is saying in his letter that it's never as easy as that. It's never as straightforward as that. Because even though we know what is good, even though we know what kind of behaviors we should follow and what kind we should avoid, we still do what we should be avoiding. And we don't do what we should be doing. Now that, in some minds, that kind of sounds like an addiction. It kind of sounds like a, a personal inclination that, that goes beyond even the will. We want to do what is right, but we fall away from it. The tendency in us to choose the wrong way, to choose the hurt and the harm, that's kind of like it's deep within us. And so we ask, is there a remedy? And is there help? Well, Paul would say, knowing Jesus, trusting Jesus, looking for strength in Jesus is the answer. Indeed, the days are difficult. The days can be a struggle. We've had goodwill at times to look out for one another. That goodwill has been there. And we've shown a willingness to, or some willingness at least, to struggle to become anti-racist. Those are days of goodwill. But then, as the days continue to be difficult, as the virus continues to infect and isolation stretches longer, maybe we lose our strength of goodwill. Remember. Remember the hope that we have in Jesus. Remember the promise of new life. And hold on. I think that perhaps Jesus' words are 
somewhat similar. He looks at the people around him. They were not satisfied with the prophet in John the Baptist, a truth teller that he was, prophet that he was. He was too hard. He was too harsh. No one wanted to dance to his tune. But then they saw Jesus. They saw how Jesus was different. And he ate and drank with those who were outcast and on the outside and on the margins. And they saw how Jesus welcomed people and was inclusive in his ways. And instead they said he eats and drinks too much. No substance there. He can never be satisfied. Never be satisfied. People want what they do not see. The people expect something different and are never satisfied. Does that ring true in our time, in our day, in our age, in the situation in which we find ourselves now? We want to be done with talking about racism. None of that hard work. We want to be able to go out and play with our friends, tired of keeping distance. It may not seem to us that Jesus' yoke is easy. It may not seem to us that his burden is light. But faith reminds us that Jesus is with us in the burdens and the struggles of our time. As we look to ourselves, as we look to our society, Jesus is with us. And with us, Jesus does not let us be in denial, but instead he holds us as we grow into something new and, let's hope, something anti-racist. And with us, Jesus keeps us strong in watching out for others and protecting ourselves so that we protect others. This is a pandemic time. That's necessary. So let us not forget Jesus' words. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will learn, rather, and you will find rest for your souls. Blessed be our God, who makes this hard work possible in us. Amen. In this time of worship, separated as we are, distanced in time and space, I thank you for your continued support for the life and the ministry of Trinity United Church. I thank you for the offerings that you make available to our ongoing work, whether that's writing a check and dropping it in the mail or instructing your bank through uh, pre-authorized remittance or by making an electronic uh, bank transfer, I thank you. In the name and in the spirit of Jesus, these gifts that we make, we offer and we bring to you, O God. And may it be that with those gifts, we bring a ready mind and a willing spirit and a joyful heart. Amen. Let us now be joined together in prayer. We read these words in the email that you received. We hear them as I've recorded them. And let, us, let it be that in this time, together we are praying. Loving and beloved God, we bring the joys of our hearts 
the satisfaction and contentment that is part of our lives. We give thanks for the blessings of summertime, for warm days and growing gardens, for creativity and recreation, for the pleasure of being able to be out of doors at this time of year. And though fewer people are traveling this year, we do pray for safety on the roads, the air, and in the waterways. Always keep us mindful of the safety of others as we go. The joys of our hearts bring a sense of contentment and raise for us concerns that we share for others. As we look to the world in which we live, our thoughts reach out to many corners of the earth. We pray for all who are touched by the pandemic in whatever way they may be. We pray for those who work long hours to protect our health and our safety. We pray for places where there is unrest and injustice and oppression and danger. There are places where people are living in poverty. There are many inequalities among the people of this world, of this society, of this community. And such inequalities can lead to greater conflicts and alienation. Help us, as people of the earth, to find opportunities to mend the earth. Although our minds are on the looming pandemic, we also pray for people facing other health concerns and struggles in living. We remember people who are undergoing tests or treatment and care. Those who are living with depression or mental illness. And we pray also for all who are struggling with, the resource, with their resources and funds to make a living. We take time in silence to offer the prayers of our hearts. Prayers for people that we know whose needs touch our hearts. And finally, we pray for ourselves, for health and hope, for faith and fortitude, for courage to live the lives that you, our God, have called us to live. We pray this and so much more in the name and in the spirit of Jesus, whose prayer we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Before these final words of blessing and sending, a reminder to keep connected with one another, reach out, be in touch, and above all, be safe. Deep peace of the running wave to you, deep peace of the flowing air to you, deep peace of the quiet earth to you, deep peace of the shining stars to you, deep peace of the one of peace be with you. Blessings today and always. Amen. <laughs>